Hey, what's up everyone? This is the new chair spot. I'm using a texture pack that makes a minecart invisible and I do kind of hover over it a little bit, but it's uh, it's the new chair spot. I also kind of want to do a thing where I'm like looking down a little bit and then I switch to me like looking up like this. It's kind of hard to do though, but I bet I can probably get better at that with time. Let me just switch the texture pack real quick. I was originally planning on having the minecart be in this block, but then I was like sitting inside the chair rather than sitting on the chair. So I figured hovering a little bit over it is fine. And maybe there's a way to get the minecart kind of like in this a little bit. I don't think I really need to worry about it though. For now, in this episode, I'm planning on not having any of the pre-recorded footage. I'll have that again in the next episode because I still have a ton of it. Uh, I'm still getting more every time I play because I usually have other people. I'm usually playing with other people at the same time that I'm even playing this. I am often just in a voice chat while I'm on the server. And there's four people on right now. Like, it's still an active server. More active than any of the other servers have been previously. But what I'm planning on doing this day is doing the first ever time lapse of anything. In Kermitcraft or Creatonics, I wasn't actually allowed to do it in Creatonics, but in Kermitcraft I had never done a third person time lapse of anything. And I'm planning on finishing a shop, and uh, I'm going to do it with a time lapse. I've already started it because I'm kind of stupid. But uh, I, I actually have some things here, but I am planning on finishing it. Let me teleport there seamlessly. Here I am. I am in the shopping area and there's a few more things since last time. Last time I was here, there was only this, uh, this shop that Zach built, which sells like gold and bartering products. Let me see if he has anything else stocked. Does not look like it. We will... Hopefully do something about that later, maybe even later in this episode. But we now have this shop here, which I sort of mentioned something about in the last episode. This is the the Quen Coin Exchange, I think. I don't think it's actually called that. I totally just made that up. This is a shop that sells a lot of different things, but he does not accept dimes as currency. Instead, he accepts Quen Coins, and he gave everyone Quen Coins for a uh, oh, lag. He gave everyone Quen Coins for Christmas, so I had seven, but I spent two of them. Because I bought... Where are they? What are the things that I bought? Okay, I bought a stack of gunpowder. It's not in here anymore. And I also... I'm pretty sure I bought iron. Yeah, that's also not in here anymore. Well, we'll have to see what happens with Quen Coin. Maybe it'll fail miserably. Oh, there's someone else here. Hi. I'm just gonna stare at him. Maybe he won't notice. Let me get as close as... Oh, no. Is he gonna notice me? I think he's noticed me. Has he noticed me? He has a sword. Did he not notice? No, he, no, I don't, I can't tell if he's noticed me or not. Let me get closer. He probably has noticed me, but he's kind of just ignoring me because he doesn't really care. But I will, I will do this until he looks directly at me. You know, no, I think I need a, a better angle. I'm not going to fly because he'd definitely hear that. I do need a uh, just a better angle to look at him because right now I'm looking at him from an inferior angle. He has the high ground. He shouldn't be threatened by me. But you know what? He's on a bit of an overhang here, which means <laughs> I don't think he could have picked a better like thing to say to greet me. I need a, a better place to view this. This is the start of the shop that I'm making. It's not done yet, but my plan for the shop was to make just a really strange shop because I'm planning on only making one shop. Everything that I sell is going to be sold through this shop here. What are you doing? I, I already have a few ideas for things I'm going to sell. The main thing I want to do right now is just finish all of this on a time lapse. But then also I need to make some sort of like bridge to get over here because right now it's kind of weird. And I want there to just be a direct way to get from over here to over here. As of right now, though, I'm going to uh, sleep and then I'm going to do a time lapse. Actually, I'm going to eat first, but uh, I'll do that afterward. So it should just jump straight to that. I don't know what song I'm going to put over the time lapse, but uh, I'll definitely I'll put something over it. Maybe it'll be the Kermitcraft extended theme. I don't know. I've already done that, though. Oh, he's gone. Okay. Well, we'll time lapse time.
Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't need. What's he doing? He's completely destroying the pattern I have on my building. Come on, though. That does look kind of neat. Kinda, but like, it's not the pattern I. <laughs> I have not fished, no, I have not fixed the roof yet, but I really like how this, uh, how this building turned out, or I did, well, no, that makes it sound like I don't like it, I still like it, uh, I built this a month ago, I, uh, I have not been playing Minecraft for the past month, and that was recorded back when I was still playing it, I think it was December 28th that I built this, and, uh, like, I, I wanted to play Minecraft, but I've, not been doing well when it comes to doing my schoolwork on time. I've been doing it, but uh, I've been doing it really slowly because we just had two consecutive breaks and I got really used to not doing schoolwork. So when we started getting it again, I was doing it really slowly and I didn't have enough time to do this. I'm finally getting back to the point where I can play this game again, but it, it took a while. It took a really long time. And I... I don't think this has been the case with everyone else either, but no one else has been playing either, which means that I carry the server. I am the only reason people play on this server. Regardless, though, since I'm coming back, I feel like I need to encourage everyone else to come back too, because it's hard to get back into Minecraft, but once you've gotten back into it, it's fun to keep playing it. It's just a difficult game to get back into because you don't really know where you left off in your projects. Maybe you're not happy with what you have to be doing next. Like, if villagers are involved at all you're not going to want to do it but i feel like i need to encourage people to get back on which is why now is the perfect time to start a cult going back to the game after a month also reminded me that my microphone is worse like it's just worse now uh i was trying to tell myself that maybe the settings were off but i cannot get it to sound better or even the same as my old mic it's just oh it's worse in terms of quality i don't know why it's bad it doesn't take up any space on my desk because it's a hanging mic so i like that because my old mic took up like most of the space on my desk which is annoying well i wouldn't say most but it took up a lot but yeah this mic i don't it doesn't sound like terrible but it sounds significantly worse than my old mic did which is an uh, it's really unfortunate because it also doesn't pick up the keyboard and mouse sounds as much so that's that's like my only complaint I had with my old mic, other than it taking up a lot of space. I just wish, I didn't even want a better mic, I just wanted something that was on par with the other mic, that just took up less space and didn't have the, the keyboard and mouse clicks. I think you can still hear the mouse. Like, if I do this, I think you can still hear that. But the keyboard, you really can't hear. I'm going to spam the, uh, the space button as much as I can. Now, you can probably hear that, actually. But it doesn't usually sound like that, so... I can't believe it's raining while I'm trying to record my video. This is insane. Right here is the start of something beautiful. Uh, it's, it's not really a lot of it. I just laid this out so I had my bearings. I did this yesterday, last night, and it was the first thing I did. Or the last thing I did before I got off. I just 
wanted to put this here so that I knew where it was supposed to be relative to everything else. And now I have a reference picture open. I'm going to build it in another time lapse. I know one just ended, but we're going to go into another one. Dang, this whole video is going to be like clogged up by time lapses, isn't it? <laughs> I'm so funny. Yeah, I didn't want to have two long time lapses that close to each other in the video, so I just I did that instead. Uh, I did build this though, and I brought way too much stone. This, I, I, I brought like almost an entire shulker box full of stone. I used like two stacks, and uh, I had no inventory space basically that entire time just because I brought so much stone. But I still had to like carve out the mountain a little bit. This is gonna be the meeting place for our cults though. I haven't designed the interior yet. This is just the entrance. It's going to lead to, like, some area in here. I haven't really figured it out yet. And I'm what I'm planning on having is some sort of uh, bounty system. Quango was going to set this up with Quencoin, but he didn't get around to it. So I decided I'm actually going to set it up. And uh, it's going to be for cult reasons instead of for economic reasons, which right. means you have even more of a reason to do it. If you don't do it, you'll probably be sacrificed or killed or both at the same time because that's how sacrifice works when designing this i kind of wanted to make something that looked like kermit's head but like very uh, like a lot more of like a scary statue kind of thing it looks a lot more like a snake than i was expecting it to that's partially due to both the fangs and the long tongue and just the roundness of the head it's, it, it looks it looks like a snake. It's supposed to be Kermit. It, it's it, it looks like a wait. Hold on a second. Why is the fire not blue? I'm caught on fire. Why is it orange? That makes no sense. But yeah, I'm gonna set this up. I'm not gonna plan it in creative. I plan to the outside creative and the inside. I'm just gonna kind of go for it. I feel like I should bring a beacon over here. Actually, um, I don't know if I have a spare beacon. I feel like I should. But I don't know if I do. If I do, I'm definitely going to bring one over. I guess I'll go check. I did not have a beacon, but I was able to buy one off of Quango, so it was fine. I brought one over and finished the interior in here. What I went for was a bit of a cave aesthetic. There was water above here, and I was originally going to get rid of it. But I like the uh, dripping of the particles, like the water particles. I feel like that works well for a cave. What this is, is uh, I said already there's going to be a bounty board. There are six slots available at a time so on here i have different things like collect 27 stacks of magma blocks for three retrieve the head of tommy b52 for two collect the stack of irony gets for one just a few things on here the rules of this are simple these numbers well i don't know if they're simple but they are definitely rules these numbers correlate to how much you will get for completing the uh bounty and if you want to put a bounty up, it'll cost you these, and then whatever you put up for it will be whatever the next person gets. These things themselves are not inherently valuable at all. It's more about the fact that you can get other people to do things for you by getting them, but in order to get them, you have to do things for other people. It's a lot more like bartering than how the shops actually work, and you can make these a lot more personalized, but it is still a cult, so there needs to be a drawback. The drawback is, if you are in the cult and you do not do one of these in a week, then you lose all of your points. I'm going to go over what these are called in a minute. But yeah, the you have to do these at least once a week once you're in the cult or you will lose everything and potentially be kicked out of the cult if it keeps happening. I'm not really sure. I might increase the punishment eventually because that doesn't sound too terrible. You might want to just put all of them up here anyway. But the next punishment, if you put one up here and it does not get completed within two weeks of you putting it up, then you will not only also lose all of your points, but the thing will be taken down and the points will be distributed among everyone else. I can't say the word among anymore. It's a word that is not allowed to be used. I hate it. Now, I'm not going to apply this rule yet. I'm going to wait for some things to be switched around because particularly this one, I don't expect to ever get completed. I don't think, like six is a lot. There are 20 in total. That's a little under a third of the entire market of points that you have. But still, I don't think that's enough to warrant someone trying to get a beacon. So I think 
these aren't really going to apply, but then the next sets, whatever, like whenever these get switched out, they will definitely apply. I'm probably going to have a channel in our Discord that lets us keep track of when these are put on and when they are done so that we have dates to go off of rather than just having to remember them. But onto this next room, this over here is the Kermit Locker. We have six chests over here and six chests over here. These over here are the player lockers. They're where you can keep your points and other things. And these are the bounty lockers. How they will work is in the middle, you put how many Kermit rocks were on the bottom of this. So that's whenever someone completes the task, they will put in whatever I I can't say the word task either. That why does Among Us still why is that still a popular game? It's hurting my everyday life. Whenever they do their duty, that's somehow more acceptable to say the word duty than anything in relation to Among Us. They will put it on the bottom right. This is right, right? Yeah, it's right. It's right. Whether that's in a shulker box or not, I don't think it will be. But like for the 27 stacks one, I'll probably put an empty shulker box in here for them to take and fill it up with. And then they will put it there and collect the Kermit rocks. And I can come back over as the person who did that. I'll see that the sign is removed because they completed it. And then I can come in here and grab whatever I wanted from them. Now, let's say this person immediately after completing this and taking the rocks decides, oh, there's an empty space available. I want to put my own thing here and they put their own thing here. Now, let's say that this next thing that they put on gets completed really quickly. So the next person who completes it gets here before I do. Now, they're, the first prize that was in here is still going to be in here, but the new, the new prize was also in here. So what do they do in that situation? They can't put their prize in the bottom, or they could, but then it might get confusing if these pile up if they're done in really quick succession. So, if there's already a prize in here whenever you go to deposit yours, then you can move whatever was, like, let's say they wanted a warp sign. You can move that to up here and then put the new one in here. Now, if I go over to here and I see something up here, that's most likely what I requested initially. This is where things get kind of complicated because that's kind of a weird system, but it's the best way I could think of doing that because... There's no guarantee that you're always going to get here to claim your bounty before the next person starts their bounty. So the best option is just to move whatever was already in here to up here and then put the updated bounty in the corner here. The uh, Kermit rocks are claimed upon completion, so that isn't a problem. As long as the sign out here is changed, then it's all good. Also, if you want to sign up, you do have to put your head in here because it's a cult and you kind of got to do that. I might also have a dress code for the cult. Like I might make a texture pack that changes netherite armor or like something to be like cult robes. But I don't I've never worked with a, like making a texture pack before, so I don't know how well that'll go. Uh, it could be fun, though. I might try that. Come on. Anyway, that is going to do it for this episode. I don't know how long it was, but it it definitely took a long time, not because I spent a long time on the episode. I mean, I, I did a lot of stuff. I built this and that. It was, it was pretty good, but most of that was just me not playing on the server for a while. Hopefully, I'm able to get people to come back on. One, from just the fact that I'm going to be playing so that they know that the server is going to be active, at least with one person. But also, this cult thing could be fun. So with that, we'll see if people come back. I, I really hope that a lot of people do come back. There are seven of us, and, like, five of us were active. It was pretty cool. I hope we can get back to, like, three or four. Maybe all five won't come back. Or maybe one of the two inactive ones will come back as an active one. But five is definitely a lot more than two, and I'll take anything more than two that I can get. If this server has more than two active players then that is totally fine. So we'll see who comes back and who doesn't, who has betrayed me and who is my real friend. Bye.